morning, everyone. Wanted to wear a different mask today to put a smile on your face on this Sunday morning. Uh, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Holy Redeemer. And uh, I'm sure there's some people who would say I'm a clown. That's okay. I'll take that. But we're glad you're here, and we're glad that you were with us to celebrate the 24th Sunday in Ordinary Time. We welcome you to Holy Redeemer, Our Lady Perpetual Help, St. Michael's. And uh, even though uh, Our Lady of the Lake University has their Mass this evening, for those of you who are joining us uh, from Our Lady of the Lake, welcome. We're glad that you are here. Please uh, take part in the, the liturgy as much as you can uh, by using the uh, liturgical aid that was posted on our Facebook page. And uh, we invite you to celebrate with us today as we rejoice on the Lord's Day, this 24th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Let us begin by saying the prayer for an end to the coronavirus pandemic. Gracious God, protector of the defenseless, look with compassion on your people who are suffering from the dangers of this global pandemic. Be compassionate to us, show us your infinite mercy, and guide the hands of those who are attempting to overcome this situation. Instill within us a spirit of generosity so that we might know how to assist those who are the weakest, the elderly, the homeless, and the impoverished, those who bear the brunt of this crisis. Let us approach these individuals and assist them in these difficult times. Protect the doctors, nurses, and all healthcare professionals who are on the front lines of this pandemic. Enlighten their minds so that they might find a cure. We ask all of this through the intercession of Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, the protector of those in need. Amen. Together we implore the protection of our Blessed Mother as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady of the Miraculous Medal, pray for us.
upon us, O God, creator and ruler of all things, and that we may feel the working of your mercy. Grant that we may serve you with all our heart, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us be seated as we listen to the word of the Lord. Overlook faults. The word 
Peter approached Jesus and asked him, Lord, if my brother sins against me, how often must I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus answered, I say to you, not seven times, but seventy-seven times. That is why the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who decided to settle accounts with his servants. When he began the accounting, a debtor was brought before him who owed him a huge amount. Since he had no way of paying it back, his master ordered him to be sold, along with his wife, his children, and all his property, in payment of the debt. At that the servant fell down, did him homage, and said, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back in full. Moved with compassion, the master of that servant let him go, and forgave him the loan. When that servant had left, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a much smaller amount. He seized him and started to choke him, demanding, pay back what you owe. Falling to his knees, his fellow servant begged him, be patient with me, and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he had the fellow servant put in prison until he paid back the debt. Now, when his fellow servants saw what had happened, they were deeply disturbed and went to their master and reported the whole affair. His master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you your entire debt because you begged me to. Should you not have had pity on your fellow servants as servant as I had pity on you? Then in anger, his master handed him over to the torturers until he should pay back the whole debt. So will my heavenly father do to you unless each of you forgive your brother from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Certainly today's Gospel builds on last Sunday's Gospel. Remember that last line in, in the Gospel, the measure which you, which you measure, shall be measured out to you. Remember that last Sunday? And this Sunday we have two powerful readings, one from Sirach and then the Gospel. We need to listen to Sirach again because the words are very powerful leading into what we hear in the Gospel. Wrath and anger are hateful things. Wrath and anger are hateful things. Yet the sinner hugs them tight. You know, whenever we're angry at somebody or somebody's done something to us, we like holding on to it. Why do we like holding on to it? That's our ammunition. Because I hate Thomas. I hate Thomas. And because he did that to me, I'm going to tell everybody what he did. And I'm going to tell everybody how I hate him and how he's such a horrible person. And you know what he did and you know what he tried to do and you know, do you know, do you know? In other words, we love holding on to that wrath and anger because it gives us our ammunition to trash the other person. And we justify it because they did something to us. I'm justified in trashing Tom because he was mean to me. He said something ugly to me. He talked about me behind my back. So I'm justified in getting him back. Wrath and anger are hate. And I don't hate Tom. Tom's actually a very <laughs> likable and lovable person. <laughs> Wrath and anger are hateful things, yet the sinner hugs them tight. The vengeful will suffer the Lord's vengeance. Ooh, the vengeful will suffer the Lord's vengeance. For he remembers their sins in detail. He has a better memory than us. <laughs> Forgive your neighbor's injustice. Then when you pray, your own sins will be forgiven. Could anyone nourish anger against another and expect healing from the Lord? Oh, yes, Lord. Uh, 
I'm going to harbor that anger, but you forgive me. Don't be angry with me. Love me. Be merciful to me. But I hate you. Could anyone refuse mercy to another like himself? Can he seek pardon for his own sins? Brothers and sisters, we're all in the same boat, okay? So why wouldn't we show mercy to one another? Do we think somehow I'm not a sinner and you're a sinner or I've got difficulties but you don't have difficulties? We're in the same thing. And if, if one who is but flesh cherishes wrath, who will forgive his sins? Remember your last days, set enmity aside. Remember death and decay and cease from sin. Think of the commandments, hate not your neighbor. Remember the Most High's covenant and overlook your faults. We hear that first reading in light of the gospel passage where Peter in some ways probably trying to let Jesus know that, hey, I understood what you said, but how many times must I forgive? Seven times? This number seven, there's a fullness, there's a completeness. So for Peter, it is like he is saying, you know, a fullness uh, all the time. Jesus one-ups him when he says, no, you must forgive seven times 77. In other words, completely and totally out of the park, brothers and sisters. Completely and totally, over and over and over and over again. And to hit the, the point uh, home, Jesus gives this story of the master and his servants. And the first one, owes a lot of money. Now let's put that into a little bit of context. So I got my little notes out here and, and here's what it says. The first one, if you look at it, the translation would mean the original 10,000 talents. It's translated to a huge amount. But just to get a sense of what huge means, we start with the fact that a talent was the weight a soldier could carry on his back something between 75 and 100 pounds. Jesus doesn't specify if these talents were silver or gold, but people got the idea. How many talents were owed? The word translated as huge as 10,000, which wasn't meant to be literal. It was simply the highest number calculable in those days. We would probably say a gazillion. Okay, get the idea of how much this man owed? Now the audience was getting the picture. So you think of him owing that much, and then the other guy owing 100 denarii, which was the equivalent of 100 days wages. Okay, you see the difference between what the one person's debt was and the second person's debt was? And the master forgives this huge amount. This huge amount. And then when the one with the lesser amount asks him, he refuses. What are we to make of that? What are we to make of that? Certainly, the first man did not allow himself to be changed or converted by what took place. The mercy of his master. He did not allow himself to be changed and converted because he held the hardness of heart and held the other person to, uh, I'm going to throw you into prison because I'm not going to show you mercy. Jesus Christ suffered and died on the cross. A complete and total act of mercy and love for us. Something that is greater than anything we could ever do. Do we fully appreciate that mercy and love that was poured out upon us in his suffering and death? Or 
Do we allow our hearts to not be changed like the man who owed a huge amount? If Christ has shown us mercy, if Christ has forgiven us, why would we not do the same? Why would we not do the same? Why would we not allow our hearts to be changed? We're not taking in the fullness of what Jesus Christ did for each and every one of us. If we did, we would allow and we would be people of mercy and love and forgiveness. People of mercy and love and forgiveness. We have to allow our hearts to be changed. You know, there was once a, a thing that happened in my life when nursing school, which was involved grades and a teacher, and it was quite a painful experience because uh, it was basically uh, where the teacher got over two, over on two of us in terms of grades, and it, you know. You didn't have much recourse, but the thing ultimately was settled. But I had hate in my heart for this pediatric nurse instructor in nursing school. I graduated in 75, and it wasn't until 1983 when I was volunteering. I was in seminary in Perryville, and I was volunteering in a pediatric uh, health clinic in St. Louis in our parish. and. Uh, Walking in through the door was the pediatric nurse instructor. And I know my face probably looked in shock. And she said very, very harsh, uh, like she was still my instructor in nursing school. What are you doing here? And what came out of my mouth was, I'm here to serve. And you know, it was really interesting is in that moment, the hatred was lifted and I could no longer hate her. What she did was not right, but I could no longer hate her. That was a gift from God because I don't think I would have gotten there by myself. I think one of the things in forgiveness, there's a couple things about forgiveness and mercy and love that I think we need to remember. First of all, forgiveness is not an emotion. Forgiveness is a process. All too many people tie up forgiveness with, I feel, I feel, I feel, I feel. And most of the time, we can't get over it if we stick with just the feeling. But forgiveness has to be a process of letting go and allowing our hearts to be changed. That night, I was open to the power of God working in my life. And the hatred was lifted. I think we need to recognize that in our lives. When we have that desire in ourselves to hold on to whatever it is, that hurt, that anger, that bitterness, whatever it is, if we want to hold on to it, sometimes we can close off the Lord being able to work and do what the Lord needs to do. You know, it's like uh, not being open to the blessing that God wants to give you. It's possible. It's possible that God wants to bless us and we close ourselves off from that blessing. And so that night, I was open and God worked. We must allow the Lord into our lives to bring about that change. The gospel and the first reading are really, really very, very clear that there's no place we must forgive over and over and over. And if you hear me say this, in our country today, we are in desperate need of forgiveness and mercy and love instead of the hatred, the bitterness, the condemning, and the putting down that we see over and over and over again. Look to the Our Father, brothers and sisters. You know, the second reading, we live for the Lord and we die for the Lord. Well, if we live for the Lord, 
then we must have the Lord's ways in our hearts. If we live for the Lord, we must do as the Lord calls us to. It's very clear today. He says, forgive. How many times? Over and over and over again. And remember that in the Our Father, we say it so clearly, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lord, forgive me like I forgive others. Are you holding bitterness and anger and resentment in your heart? Maybe now's the time to let it go, to allow your heart to be changed by Jesus Christ. You see, the Gospel of Matthew calls us to forgiveness and to care for those in need, the poor, the merciful, the poor, those in need, the hungry, the naked. Matthew's very clear. And we as Christians can do it, my brothers and sisters. And if we don't, maybe, just maybe, one of those people will cry out to the king and he will hear them and you know what will happen. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, died from God, life from life, true God from true God, begotten, not made, how substantial is the Father. Through him all things are made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit of the Lord and the giver of life. He proceeds from the Father and the Son who is the Father and the Son is glory and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess my baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. <coughs> Trusting in our God who always grants us what we need, we come before God today present our needs and the needs of our world. For the church, that we who are God's people, both in life and in death, may faithfully mediate God's love, mercy, and forgiveness through our words and deeds. We pray this to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For communities in strife, that God's Spirit will open opportunities for dialogue in places of violence, bring an end to acts of injustice, and help all to respect the value and dignity of each person. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are suffering, that God will bring peace to those who are isolated, give strength to those fleeing violence, and hope to those seeking job. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have been impacted by hurricanes or wildfires, that God will give them strength protect them from harm, and speed the assistance that they need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace to forgive those who have wronged us, that God will free our hearts so that we may forgive others as God has forgiven us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who need healing, especially the sick in our parish and those with COVID-19, that God's healing spirit will ease their suffering, restore them to health, and guide all who are caring for them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers that were submitted online throughout the week, for the prayers offered and live streamed online, and for the prayers we now make in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of mercy, your forgiveness is boundless, 
and your love is everlasting. Hear the prayers we offer to you today, and grant them according to your will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. For the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all this holy church. Look with favor on our supplications, O Lord, and in your kindness accept these your servants' offerings, that what each is offered to the honor of your name may serve the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours, that by sinning we have lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks and an exaltation we acclaim. <laughs> Church spread throughout the world, 
and bring them to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, who suffered our bishop, the God of clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostle, St. Vincent de Paul, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <laughs> O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Please join me in saying our spiritual communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you with all my heart. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already in my heart, and unite myself to you completely. Please do not let the other be separated from you.
May the working of this heavenly gift, the Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and bodies, so that its effects and not our own desires may always prevail in us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. But I would like all the grandparents who are present to stand since today, uh, second Sunday of September, is Grandparents Day. So let us extend our hand of blessing over our grandparents who are here and as well as our grandparents who are out there. So we want to extend this blessing to you. Loving God, we thank you for our grandparents who have played such an important role in our lives. As we celebrate Grandparents Day today, we ask you to bless our grandparents. Make them teachers of wisdom and courage, that they may pass on to future generations the fruits of their mature human and spiritual experience. May they never be ignored or excluded, but always encounter respect and love. Help them to live serenely and to feel welcome in all the years of life that you give them. Keep them constantly in your care, accompanying them on their earthly pilgrimage. And by your prayers, grant that all families may one day be reunited in our heavenly homeland, where you will wait with all humanity for the great embrace of life without end. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Almighty God bless all our grandparents, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, glorifying the Lord by your lives. And now, this will follow the closing song. Again, thank you one and all for being with us today and for your participation in the 24th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Uh, anyone here, a guest, a visitor for the first time? I don't think so. How about out there? Anybody joining us for the first time? If so, we'd like to sing this song to you. You are welcome in the name of the Lord. You are welcome in the name of the Lord. I can see in you the glory of the Lord. You are welcome in the name of the Lord. Welcome everyone to our live stream mass here at Holy Redeemer, our Lady of Perpetual Health and St. Michael's. We're glad that you're with us. We hope that you'll be with us again next week. Any anniversaries this week? Anybody celebrating an anniversary? Well, we have one that was sent to us. Uh, Matisa and Angelo Ariaga celebrate 12 years of marriage today. Happy anniversary to y'all. Happy anniversary to y'all. Happy anniversary to all y'all. Happy anniversary to y'all and many more. Happy anniversary. Anybody celebrating a birthday this week here? Anybody? All right. Stand up, tell us your name, and your age, and your birthday. <laughs> my name is Marissa, and I'm celebrating my sister's birthday. We're going to be 47 today. All right, happy birthday. Ida. Um, that's true, um, this week I'll be celebrating my 78th birthday. Yeah. All, All right. right.
Friday. Friday, Ida. Friday. 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 All right. All right. Well, we do have these two birthdays here, but we have quite a few uh, from our guests who are watching us. Uh, September 10th, Irene Bernal turned 68. September 11th, Jonas Leos turned 23. September 12th, Kathy De La Fuente turns 37. Olivia Schaefer turns 27. Oh, 12, sorry about that, 12. Uh, Annalisa Gutierrez turns 31. September 13th, Angelo Ariaga turns 32 on your wedding anniversary, that's interesting. Uh, Avelina Valero turns 58. September 14th, Liz Ardando turns 24. Carlos Gomez turns 26. Glenn Chalia turns 74. September 15th, Demetrio Alexis Gonzalez turns 6. Anthony Gill Jr. turns 31. Julieta Sanchez turns 27. On the 16th of September, Serena Casanova turns 24. On the 17th of September, Juan Carlos turns 29. Ileana Garcia turns 23. On September 18th, Tyrone Maina turns 5. Arnold Ortiz turns 74. Fiona Steen turns 23. On the 19th of September, Mary Moorhead didn't give a date. She's in Dallas, Texas. She celebrates her birthday. And Alexis Nicole turns 23 on the 19th. Happy birthday to y'all. Happy birthday to y'all. Happy birthday to all y'all. Happy birthday to y'all and many more. Happy birthday, everyone. Thanks everyone for being with us. We continue to be grateful for all the contributions and donations that are sent to the parish. Please remember you can give Give Central to donate online or by text message, or you can mail your envelopes or drop them off at the parish offices. We continue to be grateful for all those who have contributed to the Archbishop's Appeal. St. Michael has exceeded their goal. Our Lady Perpetual Health, you are within $200 of your goal, and Holy Redeemer, $2,000 within your goal to reach your goal. And so we still have a little bit of work to do here at the Holy Redeemer. Uh, religious education. We are not doing face-to-face uh, -face religious education classes. Parents be watching for emails or phone calls about uh, picking up packets for your children. Uh, we're running into some difficulty at each, three, each of the three parishes. Uh, we only have about half of the religious education teachers that we need in each parish. So it looks like we might begin the process of consolidating religious education because we do not have enough volunteers in each parish to, treat, to teach religious education. Right now, many of the teachers have willingly uh, agreed to double up on their classes so that they can get the assignments out. But if we don't have teachers, we have to look at ways that we can do what we need to do in order for the children to be formed. So uh, if there's anybody out there who